Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. Last fall, due to COVID-19 restrictions, I found myself working every day from the home office. I decided I wanted to erect a permanent, full-sized 80-meter antenna at my QTH. This desire stemmed from my interest in the local ONTARS net, which is a daily net serving the province of Ontario and neighboring jurisdictions as well. ONTARS is a very friendly and welcoming informal net, and I wanted to listen to the banter of the many area hams as I labored away each day. My previous HF wire antenna was a high-end fed five band that was only 75 feet long. Though it gave basic 80 meter reception, I wanted to try a longer antenna that might offer noticeably better performance on 80 than that compromised 75 foot wire. I have serious space restrictions at home due to lot size, which is one reason I love to go HF portable. I decided to see if I could somehow squeeze a 130 foot wire into the available space. Given my previous excellent results with high-end fed antennas, I looked at the high-end company website and found a model called the high-end fed 8 band. The high-end fed 8 band covers 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters. All those bands can be operated without a tuner, with the exception of 30 meters, which does require a tuner. As is customary with all the high-end fed antennas I have used, the 8-band is a fine example of quality craftsmanship. It's very well built, and I expect it to last for years of normal service. The radiator itself is 40 meters long, or about 130 feet. I chose the model with the aluminum mounting plate and galvanized clamps. These clamps accommodate a mast diameter of 40 to 58 millimeters. The enclosure is polycarbonate with an IP rating of IP67. IP67 indicates 100% protection against dust and sand and will work for at least 30 minutes while submerged in up to one meter of water. The box is also 100% UV resistant. There is an SO239 Teflon connector and an attachment for a grounding wire. Ron at the High End Company recommends that this antenna be deployed in one of three configurations. As a sloper, as an inverted L, or as a flat top horizontal. The package did not take long to arrive from overseas, but due to a variety of factors, it took me several months to get it up in the air. I've decided to title this video, How Not to Deploy a High-End Fed 8 Band Antenna, because in my situation, there is no option for me to deploy in any of the three recommended configurations. This is due to the very small lot size my suburban home is perched on. I have no ability to put any part of the wire at the front of the house, due to a complete lack of anything to anchor that end to. Also, one of my prime desires was to have an installation with a low visual impact that would not arouse the ire of my neighbors. So the front yard was out. This meant I would have to run the entire length of the antenna from my tower out to the back. In my backyard and beyond the fence at the rear of the yard are many tall trees. What initially seems like a blessing turns into a big complication when all the low-hanging branches are taken into consideration. Couple that with the very close spacing between trees and the realization hits home. The options for getting a wire up are very limited. To further complicate matters, nosy neighbors are always on the watch for people doing things they disagree with in the ravine that separates homes on two adjoining streets. Whatever I needed to do, I would have to do in a stealthy manner. So here is how I tackled the problem. Given the restraints I was working with, 
I was content to have the antenna provide near vertical incidence sky wave behavior, which meant I could install at a low height. After all, my ambition was to work a regional net, not chase DX. I would use my 30-foot tower to mount the matching unit and run the radiator out to the backyard from there. The matching unit was mounted about 26 feet up the tower. I had a 3-foot LMR 400 coaxial patch cord that I used at the feed point to attach a line isolator. The recommended length for a coaxial counterpoise for this antenna is about 12 feet, but that would have to come down the side of the tower close to my neighbor's house. I didn't want to risk any RFI going over there, so I elected for decreased performance and a shorter run. I had a clear shot from the tower to a tall tree with no low-hanging branches in the far back corner of my yard. That span was about 50 feet. The lowest branch on that tree is about 30 feet high. Once I had the line out to that branch, I found I had a fairly open shot to another tree out in the ravine with a branch at about the 30 foot height. After only two attempts with an arborist throw bag, I was able to get the line up and over that branch. That particular tree is next to a creek. I could go no further in that direction. There is a walking trail on the other side of the creek, and I did not want my antenna to go over the walking trail. My thinking was that if the antenna ever comes down, I don't want anyone tripping over the antenna. So at that point, I needed to put a sharp angle in the radiator wire. Since the distance between the first two trees was about 40 feet, I still had about 40 feet left to go. I decided to run the radiator to a smaller tree with no branches and that tree's trunk to act as the support. I tied off a length of paracord to the far end of the antenna, then carried the paracord around that tree, tossing the extra cord over the fence in my backyard. I made sure to use a camo style of paracord that is difficult to see amongst the branches. I then ran the cord to a tree in my yard pulling the end of the antenna up to about the 15 foot level. This would put it well above the heads and out of the sight of any neighbors walking around back there. So now the antenna was up. The deployment is far from ideal and does not at all follow the manufacturer's advice. But that's about all I could do given the space constraints. That crazy 70 degree bend was going to cause havoc. But how much? It was time to see what my results would be. Into the shack I went to check the SWR. This chart shows the result. I have colored the range of 1.5 to 1 green and anything above that in red. As you can see, I have an SWR of 1.5 to 1 or less from 3500 to 3880 kilohertz on 80 meters. Moving up to 40, I have 1.5 to 1 or less across the entire band. Higher up is where I see the issue imposed by this decidedly non-optimal install. All of 20 meters is higher than 1.5 to 1. Most of 15 meters is above 1.5 to 1, and only the very low end of 10 is 1.5 to 1 or less. I did not measure the results on 30, 17 or 12 meters, as I only rarely use those bands. The auto tuner on my ICOM IC7410 had no trouble bringing the SWR down to a usable match on 20, 15 and much of 10 meters. So far, so good, but would the antenna perform on 80 and 40, the two bands I use most often while operating from the home shack? it was time to give the new Skywire a test. As is customary for me when working from home, I set the RF output to 75 watts and tried to make some contacts. Let's take a look at how it went. Victor Echo 3 Tango Whiskey Mike. Okay, I'm gonna take the Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, take my 5 and 5 in Ontario, Michael. Okay, Victor Echo 3, Tango 
Whiskey Mike. Uh, got to 5-5 five, five in Ontario. You're a solid 5-7 here into Wisconsin. Park number 4244. Uh, big day, Sam Spittenbog. Back to you. Hey, doing good. I, I enjoyed your first video on your trip and looking forward to seeing the subsequent one or ones. Uh, good luck with the activation and thank you. Uh, 73 to you, Michael. Vic, uh, Kilo Bravo 9, Victor Bravo Romeo, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Kilo United 8 Tango, here. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Very good. Thank you for the activation. Please copy my 5-8 back to you from Ontario, sir. Okay, Roger the 5-8 from Ontario. Thanks for being there. 73. Have a good day. Thank you. Good luck. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Tango, Whiskey, Mike, go ahead. Hey Dennis, it's Tracy here in Burlington. Um, I'm just testing out uh, a rather new antenna configuration here. I wonder if you could give me a signal report, please. Oh, let me look. Give me, give me another little blurb there. I'm looking for Yeah, yeah I'm looking for Tango Whiskey Mike. Tango Whiskey Mike. Yeah, okay then. I'm only putting out about 75 watts here uh, into an end fed wire, but uh, I am curious to see how I'm making it into your station. Hey, good stuff. Okay, thank you very much, Dennis. I got to get back to work here. Always appreciate a nice contact with yourself. Uh, Victor Alpha 3, Quebec Whiskey, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Okay, Tracy, uh, VE3, Tango Whiskey Mike, uh, come on in. Hey, thanks very much, Larry. Listen, I am not going to keep this long because I've got a thunderstorm which is just starting to roll through Burlington here. I just wanted to make a quick contact and uh, say hello. Uh, very good, yeah. You don't want to take a chance there, uh, Tracy. Anyway, beautiful signal into the woodstock and uh, hope you get some needed very good. I just had a strike nearby, and uh, and it's at 60, just pinning my needle, and it takes a while for the AGC to recover. So I'm out of here. 73, thanks for doing on, Tars, and look forward to working you down the log. Victor Echo 3, Golf India, Oscar. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Very nice audio there, too. Uh, yeah, disconnect, there be safe. Given the nature of this particular installation, I am very pleased with the performance of the high-end fed 8-band antenna. I am definitely hearing more stations on 80 than I was with the shortened 5-band I used previously. The results on 40 meters are also very good, and my intention with this wire was to provide better low-band performance than I was getting with a 75-foot wire. The high-end fed 8-band is fulfilling that requirement. What's the bottom line here? I have two takeaways from this exercise. First, high-end fed antennas continue to prove their worth to me. They are built tough and have never failed to get my signal out, whether at home or in the field. That streak continues. Next, I believe the really important lesson is, if you can't get a full-sized half-wave antenna up in a straight line or in an inverted V or L with an angle at or greater than 90 degrees. Try it out with any bends you need to make anyway to see what happens. You might experience what I have, significantly improved range. More wire in the air may give you results beyond any expectations you might have regarding a compromise installation. That's all for this time. My thanks to Ron at the High End Company for sending me the 8-band. Thanks also to all of you for watching. Please leave any comments or questions you might have below. I read them all and respond to as many as I can, though sometimes it takes me a while to respond. I also invite you to email me. My address can be found on my qrz.com page. Until next time, get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 73 from Tracy, VE3, TWM.